Facts, facts, facts. Like, they didn't see what I see. Like, they did not come from the gutter. Every day I was losing my brothers. Sending my last to the bros, I was fucked up. And they knew I only had a hundred, but I give them half of that shit cause I love them. Yo, so. It's your boy TDB Primo back again on the video, man. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell down below to be notified every time I drop a new video. Instead of looking a little different, this is the first installment of the TDP Primo podcast. And that right there, the song you just heard was the song of the week, Jay Got the City. Now, the way I'm going to be doing song of the week is for this podcast, ladies and gentlemen, is whatever I reacted to within this week is in contention for song of the week. Because Jay Got The City's been out for like a week or two, I'm pretty sure. Because, you know, he dropped the whole mixtape EP with 917 Raps, whatever you want to call it. I feel like, personally, that right there is one of the best songs we reacted to this week. He was talking about he was talking about real stuff with what he's seen in the streets. He was talking about his emotions and feelings. And he was just really he was just really putting his pain on the beat. You feel what I'm saying? That's why I feel like J5 is really one of them ones. But today's podcast installment, ladies and gentlemen, is the top 10 drill rappers right the criteria for this list is whoever has dropped a um, who's ever dropped any type of music in the past year and a half can qualify for my top 10 list now personally this is my top 10 list y'all can comment down below y'all own top 10 list down below in the comments ladies and gentlemen i even asked the discord and i asked the youtube community what their top five drill rappers were so we'll get into that later in the episode now to start the episode i have I have I have an extremely hot take. I don't know I don't know if it's extremely hot or anything, but I have a pretty hot take, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna jump straight into that. We're gonna jump straight into that, man. Let's get let's get into the let's get into the hot take of the pod. My hot take of the pod, ladies and gentlemen, is Set the Trend is still one of the best drill rappers despite the snitching allegations. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I still have set the trend. At a higher upper echelon than a lot of drill rappers, even though everyone's saying he fell off, even though they're saying he has snitch allegations, even though people sided with B Love and C Blue in the beef. We've talked about Set the Trend many times on this channel and about how how he fell off or quote unquote fell off or how he, you know, lost a lot of his fans. But I still have Set the Trend higher than a lot of drill artists. I feel like Set the Trend is one of the best drill artists when it comes to sentimental tracks. I feel like Set the Trend is still one of the best drill artists when it comes to having great lyrics and substance within his music. My only gripe with Set the Trend as of right now is his regular drill tracks are not as good as they used to be, right? Because you had tracks like No Ozone, all the tracks, all the old tracks with C Blue, you feel what I'm saying? Or OYK with Nas EBK, like. You feel what I'm saying? EOS, Geeked, like his verses on those tracks. Like he had a bunch of drill tracks that were very fire. You feel what I'm saying? Like everybody's like, oh, send the trans math flyer, blah, 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 blah. But I feel like the drill music he's dropping now isn't as good as it used to be, right? I don't think it's as good, but I still believe his sentimental tracks is, it, I still have the sentiment that set the trend sentimental tracks is where he should be going. He should be only dropping sentimental drill tracks and then sticking to that sexy drill wave. I don't think he he could still drop regular drill tracks as well, but those regular drill tracks not all that in my opinion. Now we have a post here from Drill Hype ENT. It says, "Y'all think y'all think set the trend, the king of emotional drill." Now the fact that they were able to name 10, 10 great sentimental tracks from set the trend is a feat in itself. I don't even know how many how many emotional drill tracks Kenzo Bola has out and released, but I don't think it's 10. And if it is, it is, and that doesn't really matter. I still believe that Set the Trend has more hits on the sentimental side of things, released and unreleased. I also believe he goes way more in depth with his lyrics opposed to a Kenzo Bola. You feel what I'm saying? Only person I feel like in Sentimental Joe that's in contention with Set the Trend is J5. Because J5 goes in depth with his feelings and with his lyrics. And, you know, he be talking a lot more as well. But, like, looking at these songs, looking at these songs, like, Play My Position. This this was a cool track right here. Hold on, let me see if I can play a little bit for y'all. They love me, but they hate me. They ain't think that little study will make it. Damn shot how the fuck I'ma take it. I'ma rough you, no hesitation. Play my calls right, they tryna snake me. Like, tracks like that, and then you have Long Live King fellas, Ozzy. First don't kill me. Got me reminiscing like, how could you leave me? Could've came to my prayer, but you didn't know I was sleeping. 
This right here was a drill unreleased classic. This is like, oh yeah, Seti really be rapping. Like he's really one of them ones. This is around the time where everybody was like, yo, Dougie, Dougie is like though. Dougie's top three. Y'all remember when people were saying Dougie was top three and then out of nowhere he fell off? Like, yo, his engineer really got him bugging. And then you got the on the radar freestyle. Let's let's jump into this. Let's see what this one says. Came out you ran. Let's follow me more of a man who don't understand the feeling. All these calls I need some melon. Go through pain. This track right here was tough. Like, I still believe that Seth the Tron is still one of the top drill artists. I just feel like because of the whole snitching allegations, people have kind of veered off of Seth the Trend. And then he stopped being cool with DOA. And a lot a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, sided with them. So it was like, eh, it's a little iffy to listen to him. It's all because of the politics. His music didn't take a decline. His views did. You feel what I'm saying? I mean, the drill, the drill tracks kind of took a decline in my personal opinion. But the sentimental tracks is tough. Like, I was that morning, thought it was a dream. 20 minutes coaches popped up on my screen. I had a funny feeling in my stomach, but you know that I'm always sipping lean. Big bro called me. He told me that Nas got hit, but I didn't believe him. Instantly, I got a fast. I had a dot in the crib. I ain't worried about that. Got to the hospital. They said that we couldn't see him. I ain't know how. Like, his storytelling is great, bro. He has great storytelling, like, wholeheartedly. You feel what I'm saying? Like, there's ten like let me, let's go to let's go to reminisce Nevada. Said he back on that shit. Won't fuck you on the dash food, not in the car when showcased his versatility. Great. How the fuck we gonna get to the back? See me crying, won't tell you I'm sad. I'll be to my pops, no, I didn't have a dad. Shout out my mama, she gave me everything she had. This is actually a classic track. I ain't gonna hold you. Like politics aside, quality of music. This this just rated by quality of music. This is a classic drill track. Quality of music. He was talking on that. Hazard Life Freestyle, even though it was like a C Blue response, still a great sentimental track. Nobody value my love. I should have moved from the start. I give you everything. I even give you my heart. You would have never fuck with me if I had shit that you want. I never wanted to get out of pocket. 10K, what you spend on your jewelry? 100K, like, nigga, who was your fool? Pay me, they ain't with me, they left me a bandit. I'm living and learning. They told me, get my duffel. Love is. I reacted to this, so if y'all want to see my reaction to that, I'll put it up above in the cards for this podcast. You feel what I'm saying? But yeah, that was a fire track too. You ever been hurt? Shit, the worst. The worst. Wish I could stop with the purse. So this fame should have blessed and a curse. Hospital bell, my BM gate birth. Turned to a man, but my son on this earth. I asked for love, but I ran out. Put up a fight, never stand out. I learned that shit growing up in the place. Like, I, I truly believe he's one of the best artists, bro. Like, his versatility and the things he's able to convey in his music puts him above a lot of people. Like, I truly believe that. Comment down below if I'm bugging, but and I always say, I always say that lyrics really matter. Like flow, cadence, energy, that's cool. But lyrics is what's gonna put you above everyone else. Cause everybody could work on a great flow and everybody could work on their lyrics. But some people don't do that, bro. Especially in drill music, lyrics is not a prevalent thing. They want to respond to the ops. They want to give energy, make lit party tracks. You feel what I'm saying? But being able to have bars, being able to have similes and metaphors, being able to convey your feelings in music, being able to tell a story within your music puts you above a lot of people in this music game, bro. Wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. But let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of the episode ladies and gentlemen i have my top 10 list right here i ain't gonna lie let's start with number 10 number 10 hold on y'all gonna hate me for this one i ain't gonna lie y'all are gonna hate me for this one <laughs> y'all are gonna hate me for this one now it's only ranked on it's only ranked on music that has dropped in the last year and a half only music that has dropped in the last year and a half ladies and gentlemen and with that being said, number 10 is D Thing. I ain't gonna lie, it's D Thing, chat. It's D Thing. I ain't gonna lie, it's D Thing. It's D Thing. Now, if we're talking all time, if we're continuing to put everyone's music into the thing, bro, then D Thing is 10. He's higher than that, especially for Bronx drill. But this is drill in general, like New York drill in general, right? I'm not even gonna hold you. He's 10. He dropped Smoochie Valentine's. He dropped, and then what else did he drop? Last Day In? He only dropped those two tracks, right? And then he had the French Montana feature. Like, those songs is cool. And I've heard snippets, and they're, they're cool. They're all cool. But when d Fang was supposed to come home, we were saying, oh, yeah, he's going to revive Drill by himself, yada, yada, yada. These tracks have not hit for me in terms of, like, how songs like Play It Back did, Bunny Hop, 
all literally all the classic drill all the classic d thing drill tracks none of these have hit anywhere near close to that not at all not at all and i've heard some snippets and they're fire so we'll see when they get released but i just feel like right now his views his views is great his views are great he's probably the biggest bronx drill artist out right now but the quality of music in my personal opinion isn't there right now like if i had to rate d thing as an artist right now with the music he's been dropping and the things he's been doing i think right now he's like a 7.7 .7. he's like a 7.7 .7. great he's he has good flows good energy okay lyrics uh 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 and what else and and yeah and why if if you want to revive drill you need amazing energy amazing flow better beat selection his beat selection needs to be better i'm not even gonna hold you he thinks beat selection needs to be better bro that smoochie valentine's beat with that sample was not it the last day in with that sample was not it either bro it was not it i ain't gonna lie it wasn't it to, in my personal opinion comment down below you feel what i'm saying let me know how y'all feel but let's get into number nine <clears throat> number nine ladies and gentlemen number nine ladies and gentlemen this might be controversial as well I listened to his EP. It was great. You know, it was great. I listened to all his group tracks. His verses was great. I listened to his solo tracks. They were good as well, right? So um, with that being said, number nine is Mr. Flog, Flog, Jay Hound himself. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Jay Hound is above D thing right, right now. It past year and a half. Think about that. The past year and a half. J Hound is above D thing. Is he nine? Comment down below if y'all want to debate that. I think he's not. And I ain't gonna lie. I might call it audible later on in this episode. Who knows? Cause I ain't gonna lie, we're gonna see. But listen, listen. I listened to J Hound's uh mixtape EP, whatever you want to call it. It was great. He was actually talking on every track. Every track he had real lines, bars, meaningful lyrics. You feel what I'm saying? He was going in depth, describing things, things of that nature, great flows. It was okay, beat selection. The beat selection wasn't bad at all. You feel me? Like, the beat selection wasn't bad at all. But I just feel like, I just feel like, personally, I say this, I've said this before. I feel like solo J. Hound, he hasn't had a classic solo song since Nikki. He hasn't had a classic solo song since Nikki, right? And I also have the sentiment that J Hound doesn't have enough sentimental tracks where he's going in depth and really talking about something with a lot more substance or telling stories within his music. You feel what I'm saying? That's why I feel like versatility is a big key. Because I feel like a lot of his songs is just like regular drill tracks on the Jersey Club beats. And sometimes he's talking, sometimes he's, you feel what I'm saying, dissing and things of that nature. But I still think he's very good and very talented, especially lyric-wise. Like, he has good lyrics, you feel what I'm saying? But I feel like the other people on this list have better lyrics, better, more versatility, better cadences, flows than him. Because I, I, I hear a lot of people saying that J. Hound sounds the same on most of his tracks and that he's always talking about the same things and like every J. Hound song sounds the same. I don't personally believe that to the extent that those people do, but I get where they're coming from. You feel what I'm saying? I understand where they're coming from and why they feel the way that they feel. You know, I, I understand completely. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into number seven, ladies and gentlemen. This is another controversial one. Because I feel like a lot of people would have put this guy top five. But I didn't do it, man. I ain't gonna lie, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I'm gonna go ahead and get into number seven. And this is actually really controversial considering who I have after this man. Number seven is Kenzo Bola. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Ewok, the Mac Bola himself, Kenzo Bola. Yes, 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 yes. Don't go, oh, Primo, you're bugging. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. Nah, bro. It's Kenzo. It's Kenzo. I ain't gonna lie, it's Kenzo, right? With Kenzo... I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you the pros before I tell you the cons. That's how we're gonna do it now. I'm gonna tell you the pros before I tell you the cons. Kenzo has a lot of good sentimental tracks. Like you see how we been able to name ten with Seti. I probably could name like seven off the top of my head without having to look at a list from Kenzo Baller. You feel what I'm saying? Like I don't know when Losing Control came out. That was in the past year and a half. But he has multiple sentimental tracks like that still within the past year and a half. You feel what I'm saying? And if 
And I'm pretty sure in the past year and a half, he dropped that mixtape EP, whatever you want to call it. He dropped that. And I'm not going to hold you. Tracks like Villain, Losing Control Part 1 and 2. Tracks like, tracks like, uh, 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 tracks like Your Touch. Tracks like Attachments. Like, he has a lot of sentimental tracks and a lot of tracks where he's actually talking about something. To the point where it's like, yo, he can be, he is in contention for top five. He's in contention for top five, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. He's in contention for top five, bro. Like there's no if, ands, or buts about it. He's in contention for top five, bro. His, 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 his ability to have sentimental tracks and then switch back to the regular drill flow while also having one of the best energies in the Bronx on those type of tracks and things that had nature. And every now and again, he'd be picking like the craziest beats. Like his beat selection is actually really good. But my cons with him is, anytime it's a sweepers diss track, anytime it has sweepers in the title, anytime it's those, it's that it's that kind of beat that sounds like those sweeper songs he be making, they all sound repetitive, bro. A lot of his Jersey Club drill tracks sound repetitive. And I was talking to K, the producer. Shout out my son K. I really love him to death for, you know what I'm saying, supporting the channel, man. Because you support me, I support you. This is a family, and that's how it's always going to go. But I was telling him, like, yo, I like Kenzo when he's on the sentimental vibe. I like Kenzo when he does the songs with TG. I like when he experiments with the drill beats, like beats like Villain and things of that nature. Or he goes back to, like, the original drill beat sound. You know, I don't like Jersey Club beat Kenzo, bro. And I also don't like when he hopped on the crank that beat. Because y'all was telling me to react to the Crank That. He wasn't talking about none that whole song. That whole song on Crank That. He wasn't talking about none. And people in the comments had the nerves to say, oh, you just didn't catch the bars. And proceeded to not tell me what the bars were. He didn't have no bars in that song. I let him listen to it six times, bro. Like, I feel like certain tracks with him, he focuses more on the dissing. And that's cool because it's drill music. And that's what the drill rappers are going to do. But to me personally, I could go listen to somebody else and get the lyrics I want from a different drill artist while they're also dissing, but they're still giving me lines like, ooh, that was fire. You see how he flipped the op's name like that to make it say something else? And then he said he's going to put him in the grave like an undertaker? Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, there's certain things you can do and ways you can flip disses that just regular dissing and mention names is not really impactful to me, you know? It's not really impactful to me at all. You feel what I'm saying? Like, Kenzo's tough. Don't get me wrong. Kenzo is tough. I just told y'all a lot of his pros. And I could go on and on and on about the classic drill songs he has. About the impact he's made on the sentimental drill scene. About who he's put on. And things of that nature. And the things he's done. Like, tracks like Wonder. His On The Radar Freestyle. Was tough. With Cito Blick. Fire. That's a fire track. Beats like that. That's a fire track. That's a fire track, bro. But certain times he gets repetitive. Certain times he doesn't really rap about anything on his songs. And that's no problem, bro. That's just drill artists in general. And I don't really have an issue with it. But that's why he's not in my top five. That's just not, not why he's in my top five. My number six. And this is going to be the last one before we get into the intermission. So we can see everyone else's top five. Actually, I'm going to just say my whole top 10, and then we'll get into everyone else's top five. Number six, ladies and gentlemen. This is probably my most controversial pick. I go, let me look at the list. At number 10, who do we have? At number 10, we had D. I think D thing at number 10 is probably the most controversial, but the criteria is last year and a half. My number six pick, ladies and gentlemen. I ain't going to hold you. Block, you gonna have to wait. It's busy banks. It's busy banks. I ain't gonna lie, it's busy. It's busy. And I know y'all gonna be like, oh, you're bugging, bro. Like, I know that's what y'all about to say. But tracks like I can't, tracks like his on the radar freestyle, tracks like just a letter part two, tracks like NYC freestyle, the song with Lil Tyler. The Leaky G Bando features on Leaky's mixtape specifically. Like, Busy always talks. In every song he's ever dropped, he is always talking in some way, shape, or form. That's why I personally believe Busy has never missed, quote-unquote. Like, his lyrics, he, he'll still diss every now and again, like how he did in um, 
what's the song called don't start part four don't start part three that was still tough that song was still tough he was dissing but he had lines in there feeling like r kelly 30 and the nun that's a crazy line i'm not condoning that whatsoever but he said it and it you feel what i'm saying the way he flipped it because you know 30 stick nine millimeter uh uh r kelly you feel what i'm saying made that man rot in jail for life but like bro busy has bars great cadence great beat selection the beats on that yo the beats on that mixtape i'll put that up over in the cards as well so y'all can check that out hopefully i don't forget but the beat selection in that mixtape is out of this world to me bro when it comes to drill specifically the shawnee bin lad the second shawnee bin laden track his verse on that was tough the beat on both shawnee tracks was tough you feel what i'm saying nyc freestyle fire beat the intro to that fire as well like he has he did not miss a single time bro on that on that mixtape and i don't believe a lot of drill artists can make a project like busy made on that on that uh dmto volume 2 i don't believe a lot of drill artists can make a mixtape like that you feel what i'm saying my only gripe with why busy isn't top five is i just feel like everyone else above him on this list either is has better ability to make hits catchier tracks sometimes they can have better lyrics they're just more interesting to listen to and you know we're just in a new genre at this point like i feel like with the, the music i'm about to name from some of these artists has impacted them drill from today you know busy impacted 2021 drill 2020 drill 2019 drill 2022 drill early 2022 to an extent but this music now, these are the niggas who run it. And with that being said, let's go into get into my top five. Let's get into my top five, man. Let's get into my top five. And then we're going to get into y'all y'all responses, man. But before we get into the top five, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell down below to be notified every time I drop a new video. And click the link down below in the description to join the TDP Primo Discord. Because we're about to get into some Discord responses after I'm done my list. But I ain't going to hold y'all. Number five. <laughs> number five. Yo, I ain't gonna lie y'all. Alright, alright. Number five. I got Kyle Rich, man. K.O. I got Kyle Rich, man. I ain't gonna lie. I got Kyle Rich, bro. I got Kyle Rich. The reason why Kyle Rich is five, he's one of the best hit makers in drill. Like, out of everyone on this list, he's probably the best hit maker. Because Bent is a drill classic. If I'm looking at everyone else on this list, I don't think they have any drill classics. They don't have it. Nobody on this list has a drill classic compared to Bent. I don't even... Come on. They got no drill classics compared to Bent. That's a catchy track. Being able to play on the radio and in the club. The shorties love it. It's very accessible to the non-drill the non -drill listener. The flows in like craftedness of that song and the and the way the song goes you feel what i'm saying and how it's orchestrated beautiful beautiful you feel what i'm saying tracks like g19 great track tracks like letter to my brother with jen carter great track sentimental vibe all that kyle rich is very versatile he can make hits he can make hype energy drill tracks like 4100 one mic he can make he can make sentimental tracks like i said like g19 he can make party tracks like bent you feel what I'm saying? He's very versatile. He can literally do anything you need. Sexy drill, party drill, sentimental drill, <laughs> murder music drill, whatever you want to say, bro. It don't even matter. Like, he's really one of them ones, if you ask me. He's really one of them ones, bro. I feel like when he first came out, a lot of people were calling, oh, he's a TikTok rapper. 4-1 is a bunch of TikTok TikTok drill rappers. They're not really like that, yada, yada, yada. Now they respect them. Like, ultimately, they respect what 4-1 has going, got going on. Now, there's still a few lingerers. I know my son, Jay Shady. Shout out my son, Jay Shady. He doesn't really mess with 4-1 because he feels like, oh, yeah, they capping in their raps. And they got beat up in the airport. You feel what I'm saying? Like, But, yeah, Kyle Rich is five, bro. I don't... He's very... He's super versatile. He's able to make hits, you know, and I just feel like he's easily top five and he could easily be one. He could easily be one, but I ain't going to lie, man. Number four, and this is where it could be interchangeable. I feel like I could change these two. I feel like I could switch Kyle Rich and this person, but number four, 
is S dot go, man. S dot S dot go. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Come in himself, man. Mr. Scorpion, Mr. Scorpion ad lib himself. I'm not even gonna lie. He could easily be five. And the reason why he's not five is because I just listen to more S dot, bro. I just listen to more S dot, bro. The fact that he was able, especially in time when he came out. The fact that he was able to start the whole Dark Jersey Drill Club wave is is greatness in itself. I ain't gonna lie. He's he is he a legend? Is he a drill legend for that? He started a whole wave that's still going on to this day. Now the wave got tired out fast because everybody kept spamming the beats and they weren't doing it as good as the sweepers. But yo, I ain't gonna hold you. Tracks like WNA, tracks like Hollows, tracks like Sef Side Part. Sefside K part one and two, you feel what I'm saying? Tracks like throw a few, tracks like even the sentimental tracks like know my name. Like he has sentimental tracks as well. And he has tracks for the shorties like lie to me and the scissor track that, you know what I'm saying, that got leaked. You feel me? He has sentimental tracks, tracks for the shorties, party tracks, regular drill tracks, and things like that. I feel like his flow and energy is one of them ones, bro. S Dot's flow is unique and different wholeheartedly, bro. Especially with his voice and things of that nature. That's really why he blew up because of his flow, energy, and his voice. Now people compared it and said it sounded similar to K Flock, but I could I could easily tell the differences in delivery and voice and inflections for sure. But I see where people are coming from. I see where people are coming from completely, bro. But I do think S Dot is one of them ones. I do think S Dot is one of them ones. Now, there's another sweepers member on this list. Just to let y'all know, we already know. If you if you watch me, you know how I get down. You feel what I'm saying? But with that being said, number three, and I think actually I ain't gonna lie. I think this is the most controversial one. I think this is the most controversial one right here. But my number three spot is J Five. Psych, it's not. It set the trend. I ain't gonna lie. It set the trend, man. It set the trend. It set the trend. It set the trend. And I know y'all gonna be like, yo, Primo, you holding on to the past. He's not as good as he used to be. His drill tracks is trash. Said he fell off. Said he's a rat. He's not DOA anymore. C Blue disowned him. C Blue is better. One, C Blue is nowhere near as good as set the trend. Two, we just went through a whole list of great sentimental tracks from Seti. And most of those dropped in the last year and a half. Like that one call freestyle where he was like, he was like, nah, nah, get a one call freestyle where he was on the phone talking about talking about Nas or whatever, bro. That track right there is beautiful. The track where he was at, the like the whole candle situation, that track is beautiful. You ever been hurt? Like, he be talking. His sentimental, he drops, he drops more sentimental tracks than drill tracks, if you ask me. And those sentimental tracks be tough, bro. When he goes on the platforms and drops the sentimental the sentimental lyrics and things of that nature, those be tough every single time. Every single time, bro. Like, he actually be talking. He conveys his words well. He gets real in-depth about how he's feeling and things of that nature. You feel me? Songs like Reminisce, I, like I said, I believe that's a classic sentimental drill track. Long Live King Nazi, yes, it was recorded years ago, but it was released this year. That is a classic drill track, even though he dropped it way too late and he only did it to suffice some more hype for his being and really just get it out for the fans that really wanted it. That is a classic drill track that dropped in the last year and a half. There's no if, ends, or buts about it because at 2021, 2022, y'all were saying that was a classic sentimental song. Y'all was saying Seti was top three. Y'all was saying you said he was top five. Y'all was saying Seti is one of them ones. I, I knew people that were saying Seti was the best DOA member. You feel what I'm saying? Like, Seti was really like that. But his decline started when he started dropping trash snippets. And nobody was really jacking him. So, yo, he keeps dropping trash snippet after trash snippet. Like, does he not hear how trash this is? Like, this is not, like, it's not bad, but it set the trend. It's like, yo, this is not up to par for what Seti has go, got going on. Right? But he never would drop the trash song. So, he was kind of like, you feel what I'm saying? Still staying, still staying on a good path. And he was still dropping the tracks with C Blue, and every track with C Blue was a banger. Every single one, part part four, all all the no ozones. You feel what I'm saying? Seti Blue was a good track. You feel me? Like he had great songs. You feel what I'm saying? But then the B Love beef happened. Now we got great music out of it, but B Love has a bigger fan base, so people were siding more with B Love and what he had going on in that situation, and then C Blue sided with B Love. So now it's. Seti against everybody. 
So now said he's not messing with B Love or C Blue. That ruins kind of like the DOA connection. You feel what I'm saying? And then they got kind of back cool. So it was like, okay, Seti's about to come back up. The fans are going to start jacking Seti more again. And then the snitching allegations happened. So that kind of just destroyed anybody that was C Blue and Seti fans, but not really a Seti fan, if that makes sense. So he kind of, you know, just lost all that momentum. So now he's really just rocking with his core fan base and getting new friends through the sexy drill wave, if you ask me. If you ask me. You feel what I'm saying? And the sexy drill wave is cool. Like, he be having good... Good sentimental tracks on the sexy drill beats, and he be he be having okay songs on the sexy drill beats too. But when he's if he just sticks to that sentimental lane, he gonna fall. He gonna fall. The regular drill beats, in my opinion, aren't for him. The Jersey Club drill beats, in my opinion, aren't for him. Like they're catchy and they're cool tracks, but they're not tracks that are gonna last. And he don't really be spitting bars on the regular drill beats, if you ask me, man. I ain't even gonna hold you. That's why he's not number one. But I think his sentimental drill tracks are so good, in my opinion. To the point why that's why he's in my top three. You feel what I'm saying? I know a lot of people gonna disagree with me because when I said Set the Trend was still in my top five a few weeks ago, they was like Seti. They was like Seti. But his sentimental drift tracks is mad tough. Like, I don't even like I don't know. Maybe I'm bugging, but let's go ahead and get into the top two. Let's go ahead and get into the top two, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh no, this is the top three. S dot was five. Wait, S dot was five? Wait, did I count this wrong? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Wait, is this 9? Oh, no, 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 this is 10. Yeah, okay. So, S dot was S dot was 5. My fault, y'all. Seti is 4. Seti is 4. Seti is 4. I lied. Seti is 4. Number 3. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to call an audible here, and I'm going to switch number 3 and 2 live on air. So with that being said, number three is Lee Drilly. I'm not even going to lie, it's Lee Drilly, man. It's Lee Drilly. And if you know me, you know I've said multiple times that Lee Drilly is the is literally the greatest drill rapper of all time. And I don't I don't believe that sentiment as much as I believed it a few weeks ago or even last year. Last year I believed it at its height. But songs like songs like uh, Watch Out with E Woo, songs like Deadly. Songs like like and I know I said last year and a half he's dropped music in the last year and a half Which is why he's able to be on this list But the songs from more than a year and a half ago are still added into it You can only be on the list if you dropped in a year and a half You feel what I'm saying and D things past tracks those is cool, too But I'm I, I ain't gonna lie. I don't think D things better than J Hound if we're counting the last year and a half, what Jay Hound has done in the last year and a half is better than what D thinks done in the last year and a half. So it outweighs it. The only reason why I have Lee really top three is because the tracks he's dropped in the last year and a half still have crazy flows and cadences. And like, that's another thing. People don't really know what cadence means. And I'm not going to explain it to you because I'm not a teacher. So if you don't know, you don't know. But his cadences, the, the way he's able to have a lot of similes and metaphors and the way he uses syllables in his music is crazy the way he uses syllables in his music is crazy bro you feel what i'm saying like he 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 actually can rap like he actually can rap the, his complex flows his lyrical ability his wordplay he has sentimental tracks as well you feel what i'm saying but the other artists the next two artists have better sentimental tracks. You feel what I'm saying? Lee Drilly has classic verses, classic solo tracks, classic songs. You feel me? He's outshined others on group tracks. Like, Lee Drilly is easily one of them ones. And I don't think this is much of a, deba as a, de a debate. So I'm not even going to get too much into Lee Drilly. So with that being said, number two. Number two, ladies and gentlemen. Number two. Ah. <sighs> Number two is J5. Number two is J5. I know y'all been waiting for this. I know. Yo, I know a lot of y'all probably thought J5 was number one. Number two is J5. Number two is J5. Number two is J5. I'm going to say it again. Number two is J5. And here's why. Here's why. J5 is one of the greatest drill artists. Not named Chef G or Sleepy. If we're counting them as drill rappers. One of, like I said, one of the greatest drill artists to convey his feelings in music. 
Now he's one of the best to do it. Every word, every line, every sentence I heard from Fav when it came to like hearing a sentimental track like Jay Got The City, hearing a sentimental track like Oh Lord, you feel what I'm saying? Every line, I felt it. Everything he was saying, I felt what he was saying and how he conveyed it. And I really could picture in my mind the story he was telling with his words and how he felt at that specific time. He's out here giving dates. He's out here giving timelines. He's out here telling you exactly how he felt and what was going on. Like, I just feel like personally, a lot of drill artists are not doing that, especially on the level that he's able to convey within his his words and and his lyrics and things of that nature. I feel like his drill tracks are are great too. Songs like Lamar Bop, songs like Free to Sweeps Part 1 and 2, songs like the One Mic Freestyle, classic. That beat is a classic, by the way. That's one of the greatest beats I've ever heard in the past year. You feel what I'm saying? Like, he's great. Like, his sentimental tracks, top tier. His drill tracks, very sturdy. His party tracks, very sturdy. His verse on I Like to Party, that was probably the best verse on that whole song. You know, I like to party. Party with... Clap, clap to the beat. Like, I'm trying to see if she would it. Like, that, his verse on that was tough. Like, he ran that. He ran that. That mixtape we reacted to, I'll put that up above in the cards like I've been saying. That right there is one of them ones, bro. That right there is one of them ones. I ain't gonna lie, that was the best of best drill EP I've heard this year. Now the year basically just started, we're, in, we're three months in, but that's the best one easily. Every track was fire. Every track was fire. He didn't have a single track below a 7.5. Like every feature was tough. The beat selection and beats created were great. Shout out 917 Racks. He was talking on every track, the like the lyrics, the flows, the cadences. The only thing I feel like why people don't like J5, and I've said it before, is because of his flow and his voice. That's, nobody's ever said J5 can't rap. They've said he's trash, but nobody's ever said he can't rap. And when it comes to drill music, people don't care if you can rap or not. Let's be real. It's about how you deliver it, your flow, and your energy. That, especially the people that are calling J5 trash, that's what they really care about, bro. That's what they really care about in this drill scene. You feel what I'm saying? That's what they really care about. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get to number one spot. This is where I thought, this is where y'all thought I was going to put J5. But I ain't going to lie, this is where I put Leaky G Bando. I ain't going to lie, I don't think anyone expected me to put Leaky first. And I don't think the bros that are about to watch this video expected me to put Leaky first, bro. Y'all, y'all know how I feel about Leaky, but y'all don't really know how I feel about Leaky, bro. Y'all don't really know how I feel about G Bando Jordan. Like, Leaky, in my personal opinion, is a top five drill rapper of all time. He could be three, he could be five, he could even be one. We could really talk about it. But he's easily one of the great. And I'm talking about drill as a whole. I'm talking Chicago. I'm talking. Philly, I'm talking Florida, I'm talking Kansas. Leaky G Bando is one of them ones. Leaky G Bando is one of them ones. Nobody has the vocabulary, nobody has the simile connection, the flows, the cadence of a Leaky G Bando, bro. Not at all. Not at all. I'm telling you this right now. Lyrics-wise, there's probably better lyricists than G. Bando Jordan. I can hear you even say J5 is a better lyricist. But Leaky G. Bando passed one of the goals. 2019 Leaky G. Bando is a goal. The, vocab the vocabulary he was using and the words he was conveying in his music, top tier. I suggest y'all go on SoundCloud, go on YouTube, and listen to 2019 Leaky G. Bando. B selection, top tier. Songs like evacuation that's a top tier drill beat that verse is a peak that lead the bando verse and busy verse peak the um light work freestyle great verse you feel what i'm saying present leaky g bando i didn't listen to the last mixtape he dropped that's on me right but i've heard like four tracks off that mixtape fire fire easily eight out of 10s eight out of 10s for all four songs but i heard blood sweat and tears I listen to Blood, Sweat, and Tears routinely. That is the greatest drill mixtape to drop in the past two years, bro. 
in the past two years. Songs like Cry. Songs like Cry. He said, you told me stop cheating. He said, you told me stop cheating. I told you I'm trying. That is a real ass line, but that is such a crazy line. But the fact that that's what he's going through is crazy. Like, really picture that. Like, yo, I really love this shorty, bro. But I just can't. I keep giving in to my lust. And I'm trying to grow from it, but I just don't know how. That is such a real line in itself. That's one line throughout that whole song, bro. He's conveying about the people he's lost along his journey in life and within rap and things of that nature. He's conveying his feelings for his daughter and his family. And now he has to balance being a father in the streets, having a family, and still trying to make it in rap. Like, that's in itself is insane, bro. Tracks like Pride and Pain, where he's really talking about how his how he, how he was in the past within the present, what he's about to go through now being with that he has to go to he has to go to jail. So he's getting this whole project out before he has to leave so that the fans can have something and that his people could remember him by while he's gone. Like that's so real to me, it's crazy. And the fact that he recorded another mixtape before he left is even crazier. Like his work ethic is just out of this world, bro. And his beat selection is great. His lyrics is great. You feel me? I just feel like he's one of them ones, bro. But get down below in the comment section. Let me know how y'all feel down below in the comments, man. I'm going to get into some of you guys' responses. I'm going to start with the Discord first. So if you want to join the Discord, click the link down below in the description. And let's continue on with this podcast, man. Let's continue on with this podcast. It's been your boy, TTP Primo. And let's go. I ain't going to lie. Let's go. I would start with YouTube, guys. But the YouTube guys had some interesting responses. But I want to start with the... uh. The Discord. I want to start with the Discord, ladies and gentlemen. I do want to get into the Discord. Let me move myself to the bottom for you. For you guys. And let's see what the Discord had to say. At everyone, I need your top five drill rapper list. I'm making a top ten drill rapper list and need some names. Now, I only did this because I wanted to see their the names they would bring up so it could help me think. Now... They didn't name anybody I personally would have named. They didn't name a single person I I would have named on this list. They didn't name a single person. In my actually, they did. They named a few people. My son Noski. Shout out my son Noski, man. He said Lee Drilly, Ewu, LA. I ain't gonna lie, LA is tough. I understand Lee, but I think he's he's he has Drilly and 300 bias. Cause the fact that you have you have LA, Mulaji's, and Sticky in your top, I guess this is like a top seven, top 10, I guess. But I guess it's who he's listening to right now. I guess it's just who he's listening to right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said Lee Drilly, Ewu, LA, Nay Benz, Shimi, Mulaji's, Sticky, Emro, and the Troopers. I've never heard a Sticky song in my life. I just know he's 300. That's about it. Now, Shout out my son, Lucky. Lucky said, Duty Low. Duty Low number one is crazy. Out of his top five, Duty Low over Rich Nunu is crazy in my opinion. But he said, Nay Ben second. Off of two tracks, by the way. She dropped two tracks. She dropped two tracks. Emerald, Rich Nunu, and Bobby Two Tap. I'm not going to lie. Not having J5 on this list is crazy in my opinion. But you like what you like. You like what you like. Let's see, let's see. Shout out my son, Lotus. You feel what I'm saying? He said, Emro, Duty Low, Kyle Rich, Bloody, j Hound. My only gripe with this list right here, Kyle Rich, Below, Emro, and Duty Low. Insane. I want to know these guys' explanations. I for sure want to know these guys' explanations on this. I should have asked them that beforehand, but it's okay. It's okay. Lucky said, not gonna lie, Bobby one of them ones that's tough as hell, but you never hear about him. I ain't gonna lie, people don't mention Bobby, and he's tough. He's very tough, but I don't think he's top five tough. I don't think he's top five tough. Is that it for the Discord side of things? Yeah, 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 that's it for the Discord side of things. Let me just make sure. Let me just make sure. Yeah, that's it for the Discord side of things. So let's go ahead and jump straight, straight, straight into the YouTube side of things. Now, I ain't gonna lie, I got more, I got way more, I got way more, like, uh, comments on the YouTube side of things than Discord, but if you wanna join the Discord, please join, you feel what I'm saying? And if you wanna keep in, keep in touch with the YouTube community and things of that nature, 
just click the community tab, man. We be going crazy in YouTube community. So let's go ahead and jump straight into this, man. Shout out my boy Crown. He said J5, 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 J5. <laughs> Yo, I gonna lie, J5 five times is crazy. They said, damn, D1 Meat Rider. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. He, I Capilla, shout out my boy Capilla. I ain't gonna lie. I be seeing him in the comments OD. He said, J5, Kenzo Bola, J Hound, Kyle Rich, Kenny Capone. He said, I've been listening to these five real heavy these past few months. I'm not gonna lie. This is my favorite list I've seen so far. J5, one, Ken. These are all people that have great lyrics and great bars and things of that nature. Shout out to my boy, Better Than You. He said, Pop Smoke, K Flock, Sleepy, J5, Naughty Osama. He had me until the Naughty. I don't know how J5, Sleepy, K Flock, and Pop Smoke are being mentioned in the same sentence as a Naughty Osama, or how that's even possible. But to each his own. To each his own. As I see, I like the comment. To each his own. You feel what I'm saying? My guy Haley, man. My guy Haley. She said, she said, Didi Osama, Kenzo Bola, Duty Low, Didi Osama again, and Sugar Hill Dida. Two Didi Osamas is crazy, gang. But I understand. I understand where she's coming from. You feel me? I understand, I understand completely where she's coming from. But the fact that Kenzo is the only non-OY is hilarious to me. Now, shout out my boy Flux. He gave an all-time list and a right now list. This is what I love. This is what I love. The question is open-ended, so you can do whatever you want with the question. And I love when y'all flip it like this. Pause. Right? His all-time list. Lee Drilly is the greatest drill rapper of all time. I'm glad somebody understands where I'm coming from when I tell people that. I still have... The reason why Lee Drilly is not one in my list is because I'm I'm weighing heavy on the last year and a half. It's not that it's only the last year and a half, but I'm weighing heavy on it. You feel what I'm saying? Second, Coach the Ghost. Third, TG Crippy. That one caught me off guard. TG Crippy, top three all time, and Coach the Ghost is second is crazy to me. His fourth is, Sa is Sage Drilly slash J5. And 2021-2022, Seti is fifth. Yeah, people tell me I was bugging for having SETI top three and things of that nature. But that 2021-2022 run is crazy. Even his 2023 run is crazy. His 2024 run is actually great as well as of right now, if you ask me. His right now is Kenzo, Baller, J5, Mati Tuhati, Ray Baller, J5 slash 150 Wiz. Mati Tuhati in your top three, I respect that. Because he's the way he's flipping these plug-in B beats is great. My son Gus said, K Flock, D Thing, Didi Osama, E Dot. That's four people, bro. Is he okay? Is he okay? That's four people. Hey, man, if you can't come up with a fifth, that's cool to me. I ain't gonna lie, that's fine by me. Trev, shout out my son Trev, I ain't gonna lie. K Five, K Five, K Flock, J Hound, J Five, Sha G's, Lil 50, S Dot Go. Lil 50. Is Lil 50, I've never even heard a drill, drill track from that, man. I've only heard melodic songs. I've only heard melodic songs from him. But to be over S dot is crazy. I ain't gonna lie. To be over S dot is crazy. That's the first time I'm seeing Sha G's, by the way. I'm surprised I haven't seen more Sha G's. I feel like if I see if I asked this six months ago, four months ago, people would be saying Sha G's more. Back when he was dropping crazy consistently. Last one. D Thing, J5, E Day Guns, and Lee Drilly. And I also skipped over It's Carter, dickhead. This is Jen, This is the Jen Carter fan page. Shout out Jen Carter. Jen Carter, Tata, E-Day Guns, Kyle Rich, K-Flock. The fact that you're a Jen Carter fan page and you put E-Day Guns, <laughs> E-Day Guns over Ke uh, Kyle Rich is hilarious to me. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> but people tell me E-Day has some tracks. Like, he has great tracks. And I, 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 I'm going to tap in because I don't know. I don't know Bone or E-Day. But from what I've heard, it's not it's not top five material or top ten material. You feel what I'm saying? But I appreciate everyone that has sent in, you know what I'm saying, their top five suggestions and their top five artists. You feel what I'm saying? I appreciate every single which one of y'all, man, but that's going to be it for the top 10, top 5 
we're going to get into the last segment of the podcast. <clears throat> this is what I like to call, you're not dead ass right now, aka comment responses. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, as a music YouTuber who conveys their opinion a lot, people have the need to go against an opinion for some reason. And I love it. I love being able to have conversations in the comments and things of that nature because no one's ever going to agree with what I have to say. Because who am I, right? I have 5,000 subscribers, 3 million views. Who am I? Who am I? I'm not BMD upper class. I'm not Crooklyn. I'm not I'm not Los Polos. I'm not Kai Sinet. I'm not your age. So who am I, bro? What are you talking about, right? Now, the first one I wanted to bring up. I'm not even going to lie. This is a this is this is pretty controversial. It says Yavi been rapping like this. Him and S dot don't sound nothing alike. Flow different, cadence different, voice different. I'ma show y'all, I'ma show y'all this just so y'all see it, just so y'all know I'm not capping. I'm not even gonna hold you. The fact that no one realizes that I said similar, I never said they sound they sound exactly alike. I never said Yavi was copying them. People in the comments think I'm like, you feel what I'm saying? I never even said Yavi didn't do it first. All I said was Yavi sounds similar to S Dot and has a similar voice to J5. And at first, people were agreeing with me. They were like, oh yeah, you got a spot on gang. You know exactly what you're talking about. I can see the comparisons. I see where you're coming from, blah, 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 blah. Now, people have the nerve to say, Yavi was rapping first. When I ain't gonna lie, I stopped been rapping since 2020, 2021. So I, I haven't heard a Yavi DG track since 2022. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't really care. That's not what this is about. But the fact that y'all can't hear in the delivery in the cadence, that's why I don't think y'all really know what cadence means. I feel like a lot of y'all think cadence <laughs> is similar to delivery and similar to flow. But I feel like a lot of y'all don't really know what cadence means. And y'all just think cadence is flow and how they deliver that flow, which it kind of is. But that cadence is exactly the same, especially especially with J5. Especially like him and J5 have similar cadences and so does S dot in this, in, to an extent. Like when people say S dot, all the sweepers sound like S dot. They do. Like they sound very similar to what S dot has going on. Same with Yavi. It's like it's not. It's not hard to connect. It's not hard to connect at all. Like it's it's clearly similar. But people people think it's either he sounds like him or he doesn't. It's not like oh he sounds like them a little bit, which is what I was saying. Which is easily what I was saying. You know, I got into a conversation with somebody in the comments. And he brought up how Yavi DG, no, no Yavi D, no K, he said, you said that S dot sounds like K flock. No, I said, people said that S dot sounded like K flock, which he sounds very similar to flock, especially on the first listen. Everyone had this sentiment. Everyone who heard S dot for the first time had this sentiment because it's very easy to connect and see like people in my comments. Every time I'm reacting to K, uh, S dot on live live on on youtube hit the notification button to be notified when i go live but every time he says god god boom you feel what i'm saying they're like oh he sounds like k flock every time i see a comment every time bro every time i play s dot for my intro song for the, the stream a lot and people be like k flock question mark question mark so it's not just me with this sentiment to this day it's not just me i don't think it anymore because i listen to s dot's music and i understand now but still it's still prevalent to this day, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just me. Then he proceeds to go on and say, S dot has no, he has no song. No, no, he said K flock has no songs that sound like WNA. Nobody said S dot was copying K flock when it came to songs. It's strictly voice. It's strictly voice. It's a voice thing. You could sing and st you could sing with a deep voice and still sound like K Flock. Like I don't understand why he felt that was a good point to bring up. And then when I had the Yavi DG comparison, people had the nerve. People had the nerve to tell me. Chat. People had the nerve to tell me. Oh, 
what you guys gonna expect from a casual who's not from New York? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Once, yo, my second time listening to Yavi DG, right? People have the nerve to make assumptions about me. One, casual is crazy. I've been listening to music since I was two years old. Actually, I've been listening to music since I was born. But I've been able to convey and like understand music since I was three. I make my own music. I don't understand why people have the nerve to just understand and know who I am off of one YouTube video. Like that shit don't even make sense to me, bro. Like that don't I don't, I don't mean to curse, but like that don't even make sense to me, bro. Like at all. And for y'all to tell me I'm not from New York is crazy to me. Like just because I don't have a crazy strong accent, like like I'm like I'm faking it like J Lo. Like 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 that don't mean nothing. Like I st I still literally use New York slang every chance I get. Like, I have somewhat of an accent. And all y'all had, if you really know me and you're really in the Discord, in the community, y'all know where I'm from. And I'm not going to tell y'all where I'm from because if y'all know, y'all know. But I'm most definitely from New York. You feel what I'm saying? And if you're in the community, you're going to find out. You feel what I'm saying? But I, I'm not about to tell nobody that's not in the community where I'm from or how old I am or what I got going on. Because y'all just be here to have hate comments, bro. That's all y'all ever was trying to do, bro. Because that don't even make sense. Casual? How am I casual when I have over a thousand videos on YouTube in only a year and some change? Like, I have over a thousand videos on YouTube over a year and some change and I'm a casual. I can make callbacks to songs that's not even drill. And it can be drill. From 2015, 2016. And I'm a casual. You just know that because of a Yavi DG comparison. Not a factual statement I said. Not, you feel what I'm saying? A similarity. People be bugging in these comments, man. Like, I really don't understand, man. It, it really grinds my gears. As someone I know would say. And the last comment I want to get into. We're only going to get into two comments. Last comment I want to get into. Take a sip of my water. Is it just me? Or does this guy kind of sound like C Blue? <laughs> Just so y'all know, I'm not capping. Y'all might be able to see the remnants of the comment. You feel what I'm saying? Y'all might be able to see the remnants of the comment. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I've been getting this comment ever since I started YouTube. And it appeared first two months into my journey. Now, I understand why people say it. You feel what I'm saying? My voice don't be that deep. My voice changes frequently. It's not something I can control. It's not something I know how to fix. It's not something I want to fix. It's not something that matters because it was my God-given voice and I could care less what goes on. People have told me I sound like C Blue. People have told me I look like Wulati, all people. People have told me I look like Remo G's. That's a crazy pull. I don't lie. That's a crazy pull. That's a deep bag pull. Remo G's is hilarious. Cause I can honestly see it. <laughs> like I can understand why you say that, right? Sounding like C Blue, I don't think I sound like C Blue. I understand why people say it. Look like Bulati. I don't see it at all. <laughs> I don't see it at all. But I understand why people say it. You feel what I'm saying? But I will beat these allegations, chat. <laughs> I promise y'all, I will beat these allegations. But I also want to say that to say, I ain't gonna lie, we need to ask C Blue. We need to ask C Blue. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I'm gonna get his attention. When he goes live on YouTube, I need to get his attention. And I need to ask, I need to ask Tata as well. Cause I see he be streaming, I see Jen Carter be streaming. So I'm gonna tap into some of these drill these drill artists. I'm gonna tap into some of these streamers. And I'm going I'm to see, do I sound like C Blue? Because I ain't going to lie, I don't see it, man. I ain't going to lie, I don't see it. But with that being said, this wraps up the first episode of the TDP Primo Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. If you made it this far in the video, comment down below a Shinto Strong. If you have, if you have, if you have an iPhone, just type in S-H-I-N-T-O. And this right here, oh, hold on. How do you, this right here is a Shinto. This is the symbol for the TTP 
Primo channel. This is the TTP symbol. This is the TTP shrine. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. You feel what I'm saying? But with that being said, this has been a great episode, man. This is just a podcast to get my music takes off. This is just a podcast to talk about music. This is just a podcast to just talk, bro. You feel what I'm saying? And y'all can be on the podcast. You can be featured on the podcast as well. Just comment down below. And we're going to read some of the comments, ladies and gentlemen. But that being said, I love y'all and I'm out. If y'all have any takes, comment them down below. Join the Discord to be a part of the podcast as well. And make sure y'all tune into the community tab every now and again. Because I will be asking y'all continued questions on there. But with that being said, I love y'all and I'm out. Cue the outro music. Peace.